So Vicki, I got this question from one of our clients recently. How long should I keep paying for my 19 year old's unsettling lifestyle? Are you worried about whether you're helping or enabling? We've helped thousands of parents just like you to answer that and other pressing questions. Let's get into it. Let's go over four considerations here together as you make the decisions about where to set those limits. And the fact that you're asking the question in the first place tells us a lot about where we are. So let's start with that first consideration. That first consideration is what stage of moral development are we dealing with here? What Vicki's referring to here is a model that we've developed for our parent coaching programs. You can get a copy of this. Go to the URL that's on your screen, drpauljenkins.com forward slash stages. And we will put this right in your inbox so that you'll know exactly what we're referring to when we're talking about what stage is your child on. We're not going to go into a lot of detail about the model right now, but just realize that you need to understand where are they, what stage is our child working with? Is Are they cooperating with us? Are they communicating with us? Are they taking any initiative? So we need to understand exactly yeah. where they are so that it helps us determine how we're going to respond to them. Such an important consideration. Mm -hmm. When, when I get this question in our coaching groups, for example, I'll always say, well, it depends. <laughs> Meaning, it depends on what stage they're on. Mm -hmm. Vicki, you mentioned cooperation, you mentioned communication. So think of it this way for a minute. My kid, kid, young adult, is either cooperating with me or not. If they're cooperating with you, we got a whole different set of possibilities that we can work with. If they're not cooperating with you, that's what we refer to as stage one in the model, and it requires a very different intervention from the parent. We've listed this as a consideration because when you're trying to decide how much should I continue to support them through money or contributions or other resources that you're providing, the answer is going to depend on, well, what stage of moral development are right. they in right now? Here's the second consideration as you're making those decisions. How's the communication? Vicki, when you shared earlier that the first consideration is what stage of moral development are right. they in, the, the second one ties into that because communication is definitely a stage two. Uh, two and three. In our right? model, two yeah. and three, right. primarily. You want to ask yourself, how is the communication? We really advocate what we call a top-down approach. And when we talk about this in our coaching programs, mm -hmm. you think of, of the model that we've shared with you, where the, the three stages of moral development, we wanna start as high as we can and go as low as we have to. If your child, your young adult child, is communicating well with you, you don't have to get as controlling as if they are refusing to communicate with right. you. Right. Because there's, there's cooperation, there's consulting, there's communication. It just depends on where that at. And then those, mm -hmm. I, I think that when your communication is open, it's easier to get on the same page and then maybe you're not asking that question quite the same way to yourself because you're talking about it. But if the communication is closed, it's, it's a lot more on your shoulder to figure out right. what you're doing about it. This is a piece also that you can have a lot of impact on as a parent. Most of the time, when young adults are in a situation where they're trying to separate from their parents a little bit, establish some of their own independence and, and maturity, they expect a lot of times their parents to come to them and lecture them <laughs> or tell them what they should be doing. Right. And so they're kind of set up for that already. You can change this up on the communication level by coming at them with the primary goal of listening to understand where they're coming from. And so you'll approach them instead of saying, hey, you know what I think you should do, <laughs> and, which they're fully expecting and they're geared up for. But instead you approach them and say, tell me more about whatever aspect of their life you don't really know that much about yet. And then zip it and listen. See if you can listen at least twice as much as you're talking and that will change the communication dynamic. Consideration number three is, what are my freebies that I'm willing to give 
with or without Beautiful. their choices. We often want to tie what we're providing to them to what their behavior is like. But let's face it, as a generous, benevolent, loving parent, which you are, <laughs> there are some things you just want to do because that's who you are. You want to provide it because you are who you are. And I think, you know, we, we went, the very first question is how long do I keep um, paying for this particular lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are some things that you probably aren't going to pull back from. Just recognize what those freebies are. Like maybe you aren't going to, I mean, I don't know. You just have to think it out yourself. Maybe it's, you're not going to take away their, their place to stay at this point. Although you would prefer that they start working or something like that. Just right, realize right. what part you're not, what, what is your freebie? Because I know that as a parent, it's really hard. It's like, what, I'm just not supposed to do anything? You know, you, there are some things you got to realize what's your freebie because that's really more about you than it is them. And mm -hmm. so tying their behavior to something that is more about you is really kind of a, a tough place to put them in. Well, and the dilemma that we get into as parents, and I, I remember I was talking to a mom about this just recently, a couple of days ago, where she said, we've planned this trip, okay? Mm -hmm. It was like a family trip. They were gonna go have some fun. But my son has not finished his application to the university or something. I can't remember all the details, but you get where I'm going with this. We plan this trip. He hasn't done his responsibility. Do I still let him go? As if the trip is a privilege that he earns through being responsible with his <laughs> university application. Right. That's why it's important to consider what are my freebies. And, and she decided that one of her freebies is we're taking a family vacation every year, whether or not my kids are doing what I want them to do. Because that's just something that I provided, something that she wanted to build into the family culture. So her, her hands were no longer tied by, mm -hmm. he hasn't filled out the application like I asked him to, so now he can't go on the family trip. Right. See, those aren't tied, one's a freebie. Consideration number four gets back to the consequences and how we're thinking about them. Okay, so here it is. Am I trying to manipulate them or am I simply honoring their choices? I think this one ties a little bit back into number two, the communicating. If you're listening, because mm -hmm. yeah. the very title of this is, how long do I keep paying for my child's unsettling lifestyle? Mm -hmm. And that unsettling, there is some judgment there, right? Are we trying to manipulate and coerce our children to be somebody who they're mm. on a different path than they are on at that moment? Or, and that's, I think, a really good question to ask ourselves: Am I honoring their choices and their journey, or am I trying to manipulate them? And it's just a consideration. I'm not saying you're doing it right or wrong. I just think it's a really good question to ask yourself. There's some indicators too, mm -hmm. and I have parents approach me with this all the time in our coaching groups where they say, I've tried these consequences mm -hmm. and they're not working. <laughs> okay, so notice what that implies. They're not working to change my child's behavior right. in the way that I would prefer that he or she behaves. Well, what if we switch that up? We're not trying to change their behavior. And it, this is a tough one because a lot of the reason that you're looking for effective consequences is because you're really invested in how you can change their behavior. Well, let's just put that baby to rest, okay? Because you can't change their behavior. That's outside of your control. They can. And so consequences now become simply honoring their choice. Let's say, for example, that you agree to provide a vehicle for your 19 year old to use if or when, now th these are the conditional right. words, if or when they're being responsible for their schooling, for example, it could be or their job or whatever it is. I'm thinking of one mom I'm working with where her son is really struggling to keep a job. And so it might be tied to that, okay? So let's say that they blow off work again <laughs> and they get fired. You're not removing access to the vehicle as a punishment or as a, an attempt to try to manipulate right. their behavior. You're simply honoring their choice. Oh, okay. This is what you're choosing. I'm honoring your choice. It becomes a very different energy that way. Right. 
I hope these considerations get you thinking in a way that's productive. If you're liking this material, please cue up that next video about what every parent of a young adult needs to know.